Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello and welcome to Inkdependence.com. Today we are looking at two inks. These two inks. This is one of the Colorverse sets. This is from Season 4. Uh, and these are the Trailblazers in Space. Uh, today we're looking at two inks that were provided for us by uh, Penn Chalet. Thank you very much to Ron and Braden out at Penn Chalet for sending me these cool Colorverse inks. Uh, we'll look at what's in the box. We'll look at the inks. We'll look at uh, some water tests, which I've already done because it's going to be an extra long review anyway. Uh, we'll look at some chromatography. We'll look at some color samples uh, and uh, we'll get out of here. So that's the plan. Um, these are 36 bucks a set over at Penn Chalet and really kind of everywhere else. They're uh, fairly expensive inks, but they do come with two bottles. Um, as you can see here, it says ink two bottles. That's true. Uh, the first one is Strelko, which is a nice blue. The other one is JFK's dog, Pushinka. So you open this guy up, which you have to cut. Uh, don't forget that. You got to cut that guy. Uh, and there's all these cool illustrations inside. These are all space themed. Uh, so the other ones are different and that kind of jazz. But it's got a little solar system here. We got a rocket and some stars and a satellite and a space taxi from like Fifth Element or something. Uh, some instructions here about using uh, this uh, ink stuff here. When you open up the box, you also get to see all the colors from the Trailblazers in Space series. There are lots of them that look pretty cool. I was pretty tempted by this um, Albert and V2 rocket thing, uh, except I'd want the big rocket and little Albert. So we'll see how it goes. And truthfully, as I'll, you'll see, I actually like the brown Pushinkas better than the big Strelka. So I wish those were flipped, but can't be done. So throw that off to the side. It comes with this little packet of things, which is fun. It's got a, um, uh, a bookmark here with a little UFO on it. We've got this thing which folds up and becomes a pen rest. Uh, we've got stickers with all the various um, uh, inks from the set on it. And we've got this nice little um, paper napkin to, uh, I guess, dab our nib when we fill our pen. So that's a bunch of cool inclusions. Um, you also have this nice little tray at the top with like a little satellites and orbit thing going on. You take this off and you finally see the inks. Uh, and as I said, this comes with a big one and a small one, as you've probably seen before. Um, they did change the packaging on these so that they are sort of a shaped foam that the ink bottles sit in, which is quite nice. Get a little UFO there. A little foam here that's shaped to the bottles of the ink. Uh, this is Strelka's bottle. These bottles are actually pretty beautiful. I really like this teardrop shape. I think they're interesting to look at. They feel good in the hand. They feel like they ought to be expensive, and they kind of are at 36 bucks a pair. And then this little one, the big bottle is 65 mils. The little bottle is 15 mils. Um, I, I kind of wish they'd given me like two, I, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. Like these, This color for stuff is kind of weird because when you have a big bottle of a color and a little bottle of the same color but glistening, I get having the smaller bottle. But if you're going to do one that is two very different inks, Make them slightly smaller, make them the, like the same size so you get you know equal inks because this Pushinka is real cool. And while Strelka is cool, I think Pushinka is a little cooler. So, anyway, these uh, the mouths on these bottles are big enough to get a nib in and a body. I haven't had any problems getting that uh, going. They seem to close up nice and tight. Uh, these little a little bottle, even this one is big enough to like dip a pen into. I mean, I filled this pen with it uh, with no problems. So. Uh, there you go. All right, so this is what it looks like in here. There is one more thing in this box uh, that you can't see, and that's it's got a tiny little Darth Vader in there. Look at that little guy. That's cool. So I mean, that's not a that's not his, his spaceship. It's a bad spaceship for for Darth. But um, nonetheless, this is very cool packaging. Um, for my money, I wish they'd spent a little bit you know less on the packaging and then made the inks a little bit cheaper, but. You know, whatever. This is a great gift set sort of thing. I think it's really neat that they come with different colors. Uh, I like that a lot. Uh, I like the glistening thing. I think that's a nice little gimmick. So there you go. That's what Colorverse looks like in the box. All right. So um, let's start off with the big one because why not? This is Colorverse's Strelka. Um, and it is a very pretty ink. It's a nice blue. Um, the story behind Strelka is that she was one of a pair of dogs that went to space in 1960. Uh, it was uh, Strelka and Belka, which are, you know, those are cute names. Um, and she spent with her friend Belka a, a day in space with um, a, a rabbit, 42 mice, a couple of rats, and uh, a bunch of other stuff like... Uh, plants and fungi and all that kind of jazz bacteria, I guess, and then returned safely to Earth, which is great. So the little illustration here, 
You can see that's two dogs. One of them is colored in. That's Strelka. She's the white and uh, white and brown dog. Um, and then the other one's Bilka. So I think that's fun. It's a nice little heartwarming story about dogs who went to space and came back with all their friends. I think there could be uh, you know a nice little children's book written about that. All right. Um, so here is the uh, let's zoom in. There we go. Uh, this is what it looks like, and it is kind of a nice medium. Like it's it's on the turquoise side of blue, but it's not quite a turquoise. It's still a blue, I think. Uh, and I had this in two pens. I had this in this pen, which is a Franklin Kristoff Model 31. This is Italian ice. This is like the first mass drop version of the pen. And it has a medium cursive italic in it. And the other pen I have it in is this one, which is a Faber-Castell E-Motion with a big broad nib. And the broad nib is much wetter than the uh, medium cursive italic. Uh, and so you'll see very different, uh, different colors coming through with this ink. So you can t I think you can probably tell here which pen I was writing with when I did which part. Um, so... The little bits are, of course, the MCI. It's also quite a lot lighter. Um, you do get some shading, I say here. The flow is fairly on is on the wet side, I think, for this ink. Um, and you do get some bleeding and some feathering. These colorverse inks are not perfectly behaved on um, on 20 pound paper. We'll look at it on a bunch of papers here in a sec, but uh, most inks are not that great on 20 pound paper, honestly, because the 20 pound paper is so inconsistent. So you can't really expect awesome performance. If you get it, that's great, but I'm not going to hold it against it if it did a little bit of bleeding, a little bit of um, feathering. Not too much, but a little bit. Uh, so here it is with each of those uh, nibs, and you get a very dark uh, blue with this big wet broad nib, and a much lighter sort of I don't know if it's like cerulean. I don't know. Somebody help me out with the color on that one. It comes out pretty clearly on the camera, I think. It's uh, it's pretty accurate there. As for water resistance, uh, there is some. There's not a ton, but there is some, which I find to be interesting. I wasn't really expecting much, and we'll see why when we get to the, um, uh, to the chromatography here in a sec. Uh, so here's the second ink in this series, and that is, this is a different paper too, by the way. This is Marman uh, Namasani paper. Um, and this is JFK's dog, Pushinka. Pushinka is actually the name of one of Strelka's puppies. And the puppy was given to JFK by uh, Nikita Khrushchev in uh, 61. So that's kind of cool. There are a bunch of these puppies, these dogs, like apparently Pushinka hooked up with the White House dog. And like there's all these puppies around. You can find websites that like tell you where the puppies are and all this kind of stuff. It's kind of fun. I think it'd be nice to have like a famous space dog president puppy because they were just like giving out to some people. Um, I, it sounds like a cool story. Um, similarly to Strelka, you get some bleeding and feathering on 20 pound. Um, the flow on this one is much more moderate, I think, than the Strelka. Strelka seems a bit on the wetter side. And the pen I had this one in is the uh, Platinum 3776 Kumpu, which is looking, I don't know, kind of accurate on my little monitor here. But this is a very turquoisey sort of uh, pen. Uh, and not a blue. So if it looks blue on your screen, that's because this is a very difficult color to capture uh, for cameras. So, you know, be warned. It's much greener than it appears, I think. Uh, and this is a soft medium nib. This first, ex this is my first experience with a soft medium nib. Uh, so I don't want to put um, you know too much on it. But uh, this is uh, this ink performed nicely, and I think it looks cool. And it has a little bit of shading, as you can see here and there. But it's mostly this sort of nice medium brown. It's like a very earthy. Uh, sort of brown and I dig it. So as I said, I like this one a little bit better than Strelka, but there's the two next to each other. Uh, the mom and the pup. Um, I think the pup meat might have been white or something. Strelka, I know, Strelka, Pashinka, I believe is uh, uh, Russian for fluffy, which is, you know, kind of awesome. But uh, here's the water resistance on on uh, Pashinka and it does pretty well. You get like this sort of gray left over. Um, you see it's lighter, but you can definitely still read it. And uh, it just has a little bit of gray instead of the brown, which is kind of neat. All right, so let's look at some uh, papers and some, uh, uh, I don't know, all this stuff here. So it's tough doing two, uh, two inks at the same time. I'm not used to this. All right, so here it is on the 20-pound uh, copy paper. This is regular old Staples copy paper, uh, literally out of my office. Um, and so you can see, I think, probably like the grains and the voids and stuff in this paper. It's fairly inconsistent. So I'm not surprised that there's some bleeding, feathering, spreading, all that jazz. You do get a little bit of feathering, you know, here and there. It's not a ton, but there is some. And then on the back of the page, um, you get a fair amount of bleed with the uh, big broad nib, but it is a big wet broad nib. If you use something smaller, like this medium cursive italic or something even smaller, like a fine or something, you're not going to have any problem using both sides of the page. And on any decent paper, 
you don't have any of this problem at all. Um, so here's this, for instance, is that Marmon Namasani paper. And uh, the only places that it came through here are here, uh, whereas you know, the water test was done. And so it forced some through. And up here, oh, why is that all out of focus? Is it over? Uh, and here, where it's just a big swatch. So, you know, that's going to bleed through a little bit. And of course, there's nothing on the back of the rhodia. So any kind of decent paper can handle this no problem at all. You get a couple little bleed throughs here with the Pashinko, but not much. All right. Um, this is a uh, currently inked uh, journal from Inky Fingers. This is a nice um, uh, wheat straw paper. And where is my sample? It is here. So this is Pushinka, which I think came out really nicely here. It's like a, you get a little bit more gold tone, I think, from this on this paper. Uh, it looks really good. And I think it also looks really nice um, with the Strelka here as well. Um, I especially like the blue that you get here. It didn't soak in as much as it did, or it seems to have with the, um, uh, with the Rhodia, or maybe it soaked in a little bit more, but it tends to look a little bit darker here on Rhodia. Uh, probably didn't sink in as much, so it's just sitting on top um, as it did here. And so I actually like this um, this color a bit better than I do this super dark blue. But um, either way, this is kind of what you ought to expect. And then from the medium cursive italic, it's a little bit light here, I think, for me. So for this wheat straw, I really like the big fat nib. For the Rhodia, I like the smaller nib because it makes it I don't know, look more interesting, frankly. Um, here is an ink journal. This is a Tomoe River ink journal from inkjournal.com. Now I'm getting low on ink journal pages here, but I'll we'll still be using this for a little bit. Here are the two Strelka samples, top and bottom. And on this Tomoe River, really, this looks a lot better, and this one looks kind of bad. It doesn't work very well with this um, modern, uh, medium cursive italic for some reason. Um, maybe just because it's drier or it's thinner or something like that, but just not very much ink got on the page for some reason. It's kind of odd, but... That's what happens. That's what I'll show you. Um, and then here is Pushinka, uh, which can, comes out looking okay, but also looks sort of like, I don't know, kind of blase, honestly, on here. So I I mean, if you're a big uh, Tomoe River fan, like maybe these aren't the inks for you. I would say keep them on something a little bit more absor absorbent and they'll both look better. Uh, all right. So let's look at chromatography and then look at some color samples. Um, here are the chromatographies. Right here, Strelka on the bottom, of course, and Pashinka on the top. And you can see this is that gray line that I had left over on the Pashinka after the water test. But then, as is uh, seems to be the case with a lot of browns, you get a lot of different colors up here. You got this kind of like coppery color in here. You got some like bright, I don't know, greenish aqua blue up at the top. It's full of all kinds of colors. Browns are very complicated inks, it seems. And then blues are pretty simple. You just have blue in here. But there's nothing left over at the bottom of this uh, little chromatography sheet. Whereas, uh, as you remember on our review sheet, um, there was plenty left over. So sometimes you can't take the chromatography at face value. You have to actually put it on paper and pour water on that paper. All right, let's take a look at some uh, ink samples right here. Right there. Uh, next to that, we'll put Ricky Cha, which is one of my favorite inks all time. And then one of my um, more favorite Irishizuku inks, Tsukushi. Uh, um, you can see the Ricky Cha is, uh, has more green to it. And the Tsukushi looks like it might be a slightly yellower shade of brown. And Pushinka is just kind of right in the middle of this kind of like nutty brown. And I think it's a really attractive ink. Um, I really like it a lot. I can't tell you. Uh, why exactly but it appeals to me not maybe as much as um, Ricky Cha which still maintains one of my as one of my favorite browns of all time but um, here are another couple of browns let's go ahead and make ourselves a gradient so here we have Papier Plumes Pecan 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 depending on where you're from which is fairly undersaturated they do their inks in the French style and those like G Herbans tend to be um, undersaturated in my view um, then Pushinka in the middle of course which is a very nice level of saturation and then over here, Pelican's uh, Smoky Quartz, which was the uh, ink, la ink of the year last year, uh, and is a definitely cool brown. I'm, well, it's actually kind of a warm brown, I'm thinking about it, but I think it's a very nice looking brown. I haven't used it much, uh, but Audrey has, and she really likes the Smoky Quartz. All right, so there's Pushinka, kind of a, a medium, interesting brown, and I didn't have anything that really exactly matched it, uh, although Ricky Chow is pretty close. So if you like Ricky Chow, you'll like this one. And then here is... Uh, Strelka, stick that in the middle. 
And then over here, let's put another Papier Plume. This is Peacock Blue, which is a beautiful blue from Papier Plume. It's not as undersaturated as some of their other inks, uh, and you get a really nice color out of that one. And then here's Irishizuku's Amairo, which I know a lot of people love, and I really haven't used, honestly. I probably ought to ink it up in something, but those are both fairly close to Strelka, really. Um, Strelka seems a little bit more saturated, uh, perhaps, than these, but um, it's, a, it's a really, it's a nice blue. It's a nice sort of medium, almost turquoise blue. Here we have Karanda Ash Hypnotic Turquoise, and then this one is Lamy Turquoise. I think Lamy Turquoise is underrated. Um, they also resold it, goodness, I can't get these straight, uh, resold it as Pacific Blue last year, which caused a bit of a stink, and I get it. It's kind of weird, but um, you get a lot more sheen off of Lamy Turquoise and more shading, I think, off of uh, the Karanda Ash Hypnotic Turquoise. But check out both of those if you haven't, because the Lamy is underrated, and I think Karanda Ash doesn't get talked about enough. I think it's a little bit on the expensive side, and some people kind of ignore it, but... Um, it make, they make some really nice inks. Lastly, um, here is Roaring Klingner's Marlene, which I haven't gotten a chance to use yet, but it's kind of a purpley blue. You can definitely see the difference, I think, on camera between this Marlene's purpley blue and uh, this more straight blue, almost, quite, almost turquoise of Strelka. And then one of my very favorites, actually, um, well, Robert Orser's Blue Water Ice. I didn't know if I was gonna like this that much. And in fact, I went to buy it, and somebody was like, nah, that one's kind of whatever. I tell you what, I actually really like Blue Water Ice, and Blue Water Ice is real close to Strelka, except that it has some extra sheen uh, and extra shading. So here's here's the here's that sheen. Look at that stuff. So if you like sheen, I would say go to Blue Water Ice. A little bit more shading as well. Uh, but if you want a more steady sort of middle of the middle of the the road color, I would go with this Strelka. Sometimes you want something that's just not in your face, and Blue Water Ice tends to be a little in your face. So there you go. This has been Strelka and Pushinka. Um, again, I got these from uh, Penchalet, so thank you to Penchalet for sending these out for review. And uh, you can check these out at Penchalet or any other uh, Colorverse vendor. But uh, do check out these Season 4 inks because they look like they're pretty cool. All right, that's it. I will see you all later on. Peace out.